Hi everyone, I'm Kathleen. Thanks for joining in. Ah, this is my new kitten, Elijah Blue. I'm gonna put him down now. I wanted you to see our new family members. So I'm really glad to be back. I apologize, I've been off camera for a few months. My senior cat, Oliver, who's usually in the back behind me, unfortunately passed one month before his 20th birthday. So I was really blessed to be his mom and it was very traumatic. And then I had this very vivid dream of a white kitten and sapphire blue eyes. And I went on a rescue site and I found Elijah. So our family is feeling joy again and we're glad to be back. So thanks again for being with us. So we're gonna make cauliflower, orange cauliflower, which is from Nora Cooks. And it is one of my favorite vegan recipes to date. So instead of orange chicken, we're gonna do orange cauliflower. So I highly recommend you subscribe to Nora Cook's recipes. They're all vegan, so sign up for her newsletter. Okay, so let's get started with the cauliflower. So this is a great recipe, especially if you're not a huge broccoli fan, you can always use cauliflower. So come on over here to get in those phytonutrients, cruciferous vegetables, and fiber. So I've already started cutting, you know, you can remove the stem as you cut and you just want them small enough to dip in batter. And even if you don't love cauliflower, anything with orange sauce, in my opinion, is a home run. I could eat Asian food every day, tofu, vegetables, and rice and green onions, sign me up. All right, so I'm just doing little pieces. There's no real perfect form in my opinion. Get rid of the stems. And it's nice to get a big head so you can have hopefully enough for two days, which is our rule of thumb here when we cook to make something that you can have at least for two meals and for two people so you're not spending all your time in the kitchen. All right, so you wanna definitely get rid of that. You can save that. And we're almost done. So it's great, high in fiber, helps clear out your arteries, clear out your colon. All plant-based foods have zero cholesterol. So if you wanna lower your cholesterol, lower your blood pressure, eat mostly plants, if not all plants. All right, I think this looks good. Let's move on. We're gonna bring it over here because we will be dipping these here in a minute. So the next thing we're gonna make is the dipping sauce. So yeah, that's gonna make a lot, which is great for me and Wade. So the first thing you wanna do is use some gluten-free flour, three-fourths cup, and this is Bob's Red Mill all-purpose gluten-free flour. I use it for everything and I love it and you can get it at your mainstream grocery store. Then you can add in a tablespoon of garlic powder. Kirkland is from Costco. I actually use real garlic instead, just because I prefer it. And so I've done two cloves of garlic in the bowl, but you can use a tablespoon of the dry. Some people are sensitive to spices and things like that, so I just like to use fresh when possible. Then we're gonna add a cup of water and some salt, if you're doing salt. So it's a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. I'm actually gonna use probably a smidgen more. I actually have very low blood pressure, so a little salt is okay for me. And then you're gonna go ahead and whisk those ingredients together. And then Nora recommends using Planko breadcrumbs. You can get those gluten-free also. I actually have started doing this instead with a puffed rice cereal because it's one ingredient, puffed rice. You could also do cornflakes. Some people are sensitive to corn, so I get this non-GMO puffed rice cereal. I do get it at the health food store. But again, it just has one ingredient. Sometimes bread comes have multiple things and you don't know what half of them are. So I blend them. You can use a blender. My blender was wet, so I'm using the food processor. 
and you don't want to, you don't have to make it be completely flowery. It's okay if that happens, they'll still be great, but you could leave it just a little bit. Let's see if I can not overdo, <laughs> but still do it enough. Yeah, it needs to go a little bit longer. All right, yep, let me do it just a little bit more. And a little more. I have the habit, that should be good, of turning things to dust. So that's why I'm being cautious. All right, and you could do it even more than that, but a little, we'll leave a little crunch for variety. The bread, the breadcrumb vibe. Okay, now it is time to get messy. And it is messy, and I can't say that I have perfected this by any means, but I'm gonna move these out of the way. So it does help if you can keep one hand dry. <laughs> because I'm right-handed, this is a little tricky, but just wanna take one of your cauliflowers, dip it in the batter, drop it in your breadcrumbs. If possible, use the dry hand. Like I said, I'm, don't have it mastered, but I have done it enough that I've learned a few tricks. Okay, and we will just keep doing that and repeat. Uh -huh. And moving on. And so on and so on. So I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so I've done the whole head of cauliflower, which is great because we're definitely gonna have enough for two days. So I wanted to show you a little trick. I actually blended some more of the rice cereal and it does work better when it's more dusty than chunky. And the other trick is if you take the dry bowl, divide the dry bowl into twos, which I know is a lot, then the dry bowl doesn't become all stick and gooey because it's kind of hard to work with. So if you have two dry bowls, that'll make it easier. So we have preheated the oven at 400. And we're gonna get these in for 25 to, it actually says 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna say 25. You want them to be, you know, starting to turn a golden brown. Then I want to show you, this is just something else that we add to give the dish more sustenance if you're a tofu fan. Tofu is loaded in plant protein made from soybeans. So we get non-GMO soy, press it with a towel. It's been in some of our videos before. And then cut them very small and there's no oil. Look how fun and crispy. I'm gonna eat one. <laughs> you put it, broil it on the top shelf for 10 minutes and you want to keep an eye on it that it doesn't you know turn black because when you broil but they're awesome and then you have like a little more gusto to your cauliflower dish so that's just optional if you're a cauliflower fan now we're going to make our orange sauce so the first thing if possible fresh squeezed orange juice we happen to be blessed with a orange tree outside of our kitchen window, so we're gonna do two cups, perfect. And then we're gonna add in a fourth of a cup of maple syrup. The recipe uh, calls for a half a cup of sugar or a fourth of a cup of maple syrup, and I love maple syrup, it's so sweet and delicious. And then we're gonna add in some tamari, which I usually love, but I ran out. <laughs> tamari is a gluten-free soy sauce. So is Bragg's amino liquid. So whichever one you like the flavor best or traditional soy sauce, which does have gluten in it. So we're gonna do two tablespoons of that. And then we're gonna do fresh ginger. The recipe calls for ginger powder, but again, I just like to do fresh when possible. And then once again, more cloves of garlic. So I've also shown this before. This is what, smash this, Wade taught me this. 
<laughs> to help peel them. Maybe just a smidgen faster than what it takes normally. So it just depends if you're a garlic fan. I love garlic. The medical medium who I follow is a big fan of garlic, says it helps kill pathogens in the body. So we are all for garlic in our family. So we're gonna bring this in our press. It's so big, I think I'll just do one at a time here. Squeeze it over and clear it off with your knife. Very simple. Just peel out the press and go one more time. Okay. You can also add some rice vinegar, which I'm skipping. So we're gonna start with this in our pan. And turn it on again. You can use garlic powder instead of the minced garlic. Now while that's heating up, we have one more ingredient to help make it thick. She recommends using cornstarch. So two tablespoons of cornstarch and I use potato starch. You could also use arrowroot starch if you're sensitive to corn. So two tablespoons plus a fourth a cup of water. And then you wanna really, let's see it already gets thick. Whisk those two ingredients together separately. And then we're gonna add it to our orange sauce. And let that simmer for about five minutes or so. Turn it up and just keep an eye on it but it does take time to thicken. So just be patient while that thickens. Then one more thing, you can bear with my mess here, <laughs> is I show this every time, but I'm gonna keep showing it for those of you who cook a lot or are new to cooking, everyone needs a rice cooker. So that's been happening. I did two cups of white basmati or jasmine rice, three of these cups, and then voila, you have ready to go rice. This only takes about 10 minutes. And this aroma cooker is like 20 bucks. And it's great. We use it all the time. So I'll see you back in a minute and we'll dip our cauliflowers in the orange sauce. Okay, so here are the crispy orange cauliflower. And I went a whole 30 minutes to make sure they got some browning. And then I wanted to mention with your orange sauce, make sure you whisk it really good to dissolve that potato starch or corn starch or root starch, whatever you decide to use. So you can, might wanna just stand here the first five minutes and really get all those little white particles. So now it's nice and thick. Because we have so much cauliflower, normally you'd put it all there and cover it. And that's why she recommends doubling the sauce, which is why I used two cups of the orange juice. We're gonna make this last two nights. So we have another pan, so I'm just gonna save back what I don't use today because if you put it all in there, it gets mushy. So you could save back any cauliflowers you're not gonna eat today. And then tomorrow, reheat it at 350. You can just put it in right when you turn on the oven, heat it up for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then toss it with the orange sauce. That way, it's not mushy tomorrow. That's what's worked for us. But for so for now, I'm gonna do about half of these. can always make more sauce, right? That's, that part's fairly simple. I know it seems like a lot of steps, but it is really worth it. I just, again, think this is one of my favorite recipes. And all of Nora's cook's recipes have been amazing. I love them. And again, she's 100% vegan in her recipes and blogs. All right, so we're gonna toss them. Hopefully we have some for tomorrow, we'll see. <laughs> Does that look familiar? Did you ever used to order that in a restaurant or orange chicken even before you were vegan? Okay. Yeah, that sauce is so good. Make sure you use a lot. I think the fresh ginger's better. A lot of ginger, a lot of garlic, and extra maple syrup. Because the first time I did it, I didn't use enough. Okay. 
And again, I can always make us more sauce tomorrow. Okay, so we're gonna dish it up on a bed of white jasmine rice. Couple more in there with some extra yummy orange sauce. And then it's up to you, but you can do some optional green onions and sesame seeds. And that is it. And again, we're also going to add in some broiled cubed tofus. Okay, so I hope you will try this recipe and let me know what you think. So as always, thanks for saving animals with your food choices. I wanted to share my shirt says ahimsa in Sanskrit, and that means non-harming. So thanks for doing the least amount of harm to the animals as possible. Have a great week.